boys and girls, Robert Brown here, guitarist extraordinaire from Echoes. And I'm gonna show you how to use the Axe Effects today. Because I know a lot of people hit me up on Facebook and all these other sites and are asking like, How do I make tones on this thing? Does it sound good? It's always the people too, you know, talking about, Oh, it just sounds too digital. But anyway, I'm gonna pull that to rest today. Um, the gear I'm gonna be using is my Iron Label. Uh, S7, I have an S guitar, I just got this recently. And my Axe FX, my Axe FX is just a standard. So here we go. Okay, so here's my patch right here. This is running DI, by the way. But right now, I'm just gonna show you um, DI because I'm in a studio right now and I can't bring all my gear to my practice space. I'm just gonna show you how to run a DI. So you got your patch right here. And you have all your settings, you have your layout, inputs, whatever. So we got your layout and your global. What you want to do before you even start your DI patch, you want to go to your global button right here, this one. You're going to press this one and you're going to see it's going to say power amp, cabinet, default, etc. And you're going to see all these things. What I do for mine is I keep my power amp on and what you want to also do is go over to your cabinet and make sure that's active. That's the main thing that you're going to get your DI tone from that I realized. I made that mistake for like a, almost like a year. I was like, man, my patch is sound like crap. I'd make a DI patch and I'd put it through the PA and it just sounded horrible. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? And then I finally figured out that, yeah, it was the actual cabinet needs to be active. Remember that. Just remember, yeah, my power amp is on and my cabinet's active. That's what I do. So that's the first step into doing the patch. Okay, now I'm actually gonna go into detail about my patch. So basically what you wanna do is when you first start off a patch, just hit your layout button. That's gonna take you inside your patch. I have my drive, then I have my amp, then I have my cab, then I have my equalizer, and then that's pretty much it. Now when you first start your patch, it's gonna be blank. Like it's just gonna be a bunch of little square things or whatever. So what you're gonna do is hit enter on each of these and then just create a bunch of shunts basically. So all you're gonna do is just basically do that all the way across like you're gonna create a shunt and then you just press enter and it'll just go all the way across and then you'll have basically your amp block it's, it's almost like kind of like a pedal board in a way basically after that what you're gonna want to do is go through each one each shunt and then actually build your tone and such you know and that's what I'm gonna go to go into detail next <laughs> First I um, go to my drive, so obviously it'll be like here and then you'll see drive. So what you're going to want to do after that to go inside of the pedal to see all the settings you're going to want to hit edit. Okay now edit's going to take you inside the pedal and you're going to see just like a pedal, a normal one, you're going to see all these different ones, drive, tone, level, etc. There's all these different ones in here, there's a, uh, there's a, I know there's a 808, there's a, uh, you know, there's several of them in here. That you can choose from whatever works for your kind of metal tone you're trying to go for what I found best for me was a super overdrive I like the way that one sounded it's pretty basic I select that one by moving the this the value knob. then after that um, you go over by moving the navigation knob to drive with the drive I keep mine pretty low as far as my tone I keep that a little bit past 12 o'clock um, kind of gives a a little bit of a twang to the tone and then another thing that I do is I boost my level a lot the reason why with that doing it kind of like uh, gives a little more meat to the tone that I've realized like whenever I have it too low it's just not enough there so I boost it up and then um, as far as the mix I keep that 100 out is and then all these different ones low cut high cut I don't really mess with any of that because um over my years of using this thing I realized that doesn't really do too much to your tone that's just kind of I mean if you're really a high-tech person that really wants that super you know perfect tone you can go in here and mess with it I don't um, so I'm just gonna skip that page and by skipping page um, I forgot to mention you're gonna press this button these two the ones that say page that's you scroll from page one page two and um you'll see those at the top so you'll know which one you're on see and now we're gonna go to page three um now these settings on page three of the drive pedal are important actually because you have your bass mids and um what i've realized about this drive pedal is the mid and mid frequency really has to do a lot with your tone like what exactly you're kind of going for bass too a little bit but i don't usually touch my bass in a treble too i don't touch that but your mids and mid frequency i realize really you know tweaks your tone i keep mine kind of high yeah i know you guys are gonna say oh whatever uh, he's trying to go for this kind of tone or whatever but then a lot of these gent guys are gonna be like yeah mids whatever i keep mine rather high because i just like it kind of gives a little clarity to it but again here are my settings for that is you can do whatever you want but these are just basic settings for a basic metal tone and that's pretty much it for your drive 
Okay, so now I'm going to go into detail about my uh, amp because what you're going to do is you crank your gain up, you're going to go to a venue, run it DI, and it's going to sound really shitty, and then all the girls are going to leave the room. You're not going to want that. Uh, you're going to want to keep it pretty low. So that's for this head. I know some of the other heads you got to kind of crank the gain a little more like the drive basically give it uh, more meat or whatever but um, for this head you don't need to my base level I don't boost that either too much kind of keep it below 12 o'clock um, again you don't need a lot of bass either with this thing because um, another thing that you got to realize with the axe effects it's basically like an amp head on steroids what I realized so like what normally you would crank on kind of a tube head is this thing goes extreme so you don't need a lot of anything you know next my mids again I don't have them super high because they're kind of already high on my drive so I kind of keep them below 12 o'clock bass and mids kind of blend you know so I kind of keep them below my treble I keep that 12 o'clock that's another thing too a lot of guys that play in metal bands please stop doing this. It's like I hear this all the time at shows. Guys start sound checking your troubles through the roof and all you hear is just a bunch of hiss and fuzz, you know, and it sounds like kind of like, um, I call it the uh, crumbling paper tone. So, um, again, I don't keep that too high. I keep it at 12 o'clock. And this is, again, on page one that you'll see. So what I'm going to do now is navigate to page two. Presence, like, basically boosts your highs. This is my own experience. Playing shows, not sitting in my room. I've actually played shows with this thing. And that's what I realized, when I boost my presence, it makes it sound more hissy. So the more presence you have, the more highs you kind of put in your tone. What I do is I keep my presence kind of not too low, not too high. It's kind of right here again, below 12 o'clock. And that gives it kind of clarity. Next, depth. What that does is that's going to kind of control your low end. What I realized, when I boost my depth, it makes it sound fatter. So too much depth, you're gonna sound like you have too much bass. Next, um, this damn thing, I don't really touch that. Gotta keep that again. Same with the sag, I kinda don't touch that. I usually keep all mine at that level. Your master actually kinda controls your master volume. So you um you might wanna run that little high, a little, you know, a little bit, just so you'll be loud enough. Um, and my level, I kinda run that, you know, a little bit past 12 o'clock. Both of those kinda high. Just because, again, whenever you make tones or play them at a venue and you're running DI, you wanna make sure you're loud enough, you know? When you're sound checking and etc you know you want to make sure that you're loud enough so that you can hear yourself the crowd can hear you so it's like you want to make sure you have your stuff together when you're going out there okay next we're gonna go over the cab but I do again edit button remember that that's it opens it up okay so all of these knobs right here I don't really touch them again I just left them alone mono I know you can do stereo if you're using like two cabs and such because the Axe can do that in the back um, so I'm gonna switch over to page two now there's different kinds of cabs in here um, what I use is the 4x12 metal pretty basic kind of reminds me of a Mesa kind of the Mesa one kind of works best for me I just like the way it sounds because I use a Mesa cab also for live and then there's different mics. I use this 87E uh, condenser mic. Um, there's different ones. Uh, some kind of make them sound like, like more, a little more tighter, kind of more distorted. It kind of depends, but that's what works best for me. So now I'm gonna go to the next page. Again, I keep the level at zero balance. You know, pretty much 12 o'clock. Bypass mode through. Again, this page is what's already been there. I didn't really touch anything. So, so I'm gonna exit out of this by hitting the exit button. And I'm back here. And uh, next, we're gonna go into uh, the EQ settings, uh, graphic EQ. Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna go about the uh, graphic EQ. Now, this one's really important too um, to shaping your tone. So again, I'm gonna hit edit, open it up. Here's the whole thing. So I'm gonna go through the meaning of each one. So basically kind of in this area, this is like your uh, low end. These two basically I kind of boost these up. Now keep in mind, this is me using a seven string guitar. Um, basically kind of with a seven string and a six string, you're gonna wanna keep these two kind of high, you know, around two, 2.6, you know, just to kind of give you a more uh, heavy low end. Now if you're using an eight string, you do not need to boost those at all. If anything, with an eight string, you kind of need to lower them. Um, like, I know when I was using an eight string, for a while I kind of kept it at about like negative uh, yeah 1.8 somewhere around there but yeah for you know seven and uh, six string I keep them around 2.6 and this is kind of your low low mid area so again I keep these I keep that at 2.8 I keep this at a negative 1.8 again next is just your like your main mid section to so your 1k um, I kind of keep that above I don't run on this you don't need to run your mids too high because again you're gonna get that like overly mid uh, honky tonk tone that's what I call it and then next is like your high mid section the 2k and 4k again I keep those kind of low because what those will do again if you run them too high described is gonna give you again that kind of like hissy crumbling paper kind of tone like too much this doesn't sound good 
And that's again, that's for any tone, you know, even if you are using um, an amp or, you know, or maybe even a pot or something, yeah, you don't want to run your highs too much, especially with going DI, because it's going to sound really shitty to the PA. And all the chicks that are there to see you are going to leave. You don't want that to happen. Yes. So, and then same with um, this 8K, that controls your main high level, basically. So that, I keep that pretty low too, again. Like, that's really important. But I've learned with using Axe Effects and just tones in general, at venues, you don't need a lot of highs. Again, it's like, it just gives you unwanted white noise when you're playing, you know? And then when you go to your next page of, um, again, by hitting the page knob, um, the level, I kind of boost a little bit above normal. And um, again, I, I leave these the same, you know, I don't really touch them. And um, that's pretty much it as far as how I set up my DI patch, how it runs. Again, you can do this for recording an album. <laughs> Okay, now I'm also gonna show you too is um, when you're at the venue how to set this up. Cause like, let's say you're on stage scrambling and everybody's trying to set up and it's like, oh man, how do I do this? This is my first time doing it. Don't panic, it's not that hard. Before you actually go down to the venue or play the show, this is how you set it up. So basically what you're gonna do is go to this button, IO slash whatever it is. You're gonna hit this one and um, it's gonna take you to these. It's gonna be on the first page, you're gonna see, you know, analog, front, rear, digital, this. Just, um, I can't really explain this too much because I don't know. This is just things I've learned, I like, gotta use it. So just remember, I keep this at front, rear, and that's digital. So um, you can take a good look at it for a second or two. And then now what you're gonna do is go to your next page, which is audio, and this is for again running it di so make sure input one and input two which you'll see right here make sure those are both uh left only and make sure especially i'll put um one mode as l and r sum because what that'll let you do is um run your patch di and let's say if you have a cab run run you'll be able to hear yourself on stage you're not just playing blindly like you know a lot of people say well if i'm running di like how am i gonna hear myself i don't have stage monitors or whatever it's like well, by hitting that l and r sum you can still hear yourself through your cab. Again, it's gonna be your DI tone though through your cab, so it may not be like what your you know your ideal tone is, but again, that's just for you to hear. The audience won't hear that, so don't worry about it. But that's what you gotta remember. So take a good look at that again. Make sure you have those settings like that, because that's gonna help you out. And then next, these next pages are for you know your MIDI board and stuff. And I'm not gonna do a tutorial video on how to set up a MIDI board because that'll take too long. That's mainly what you need to know about as far as setting up the axe effects. Okay. Okay, basically, so uh, when you're at a show, the uh, sound guy's gonna come up to you and you're gonna tell him, yeah, I'm running DI. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna hand you one of these. Basically, this is a, um, an XLR cable. And what you're gonna do is take that and see this section where it says, I'll put one on balance. You're gonna plug it into the left side, right in there, and that's what's gonna give you the tone and your volume through the PA. Make sure you put it in that one, and then you'll go around the front and turn up your uh, volume, and that's what's gonna give you the, you know, your tone, you'll be able to hear yourself. Like I said, if you do have a cab with you and you wanna run it to your cab, you know, just as like a stage monitor, you're gonna plug your quarter inch or whatever you're using from your, like let's say if you have a power amp or an amp head, your quarter inch is gonna go into unbalanced right on your output two from your power amp. I'm using this crown power amp, so you'll see it, you can see I'm running it from there and it'll go into unbalanced right. And that way you'll be able to hear yourself through your cab too. Keep in mind, that's if you want to do that. That's the basics. And then um, when you hit that L and R sum, you're going to want to crank both your uh, outputs because now you're using both sides. By turning both the outputs up, you'll be able to hear yourself through your cab and through uh, the stage monitors too. That's if you're, you you know, want to use your cab. That's pretty much the basics as of that. If you have um, any other questions, you can kind of, you know, comment on, you know, at the bottom of the video. I don't want to start an argument, so please don't argue about what's better, pod and axe effects and all that crap. I don't want to hear it. I'm just here to help the people who do have an axe effect, so try my best to explain it in a normal way without getting super technical about it. So that's pretty much it.